Well, good evening, campfire crew. This is Tony and Stella. Checking in from the marker board. Okay, so today we want to do part two of the storm preps that everybody needs to have. So in the first video, we talked about um, power and different means of power that we can have. And we talked about different way to utilize water. Um, uh, while on the first video, I mentioned that I wanted to show you some, the kerosene lantern that I bought from Walmart. So it's just old school little kerosene lantern. The thing will hold several ounces of fluid and the thing will burn for like 18 or 20 hours on a tank of fuel. So Urban Mouse and myself used one all night one night on a camping trip. The very next day, this thing still had like a quarter of a tank of fuel in it after burning it all night. And it probably burned for 10 or 12 hours and we still had a quarter of ounce of fuel. So these little things are in the sportsman section at Walmart and they're like 10 bucks. They're dirt cheap to give you guaranteed light inside the house. Here's a little can of kerosene that comes with it. So you can fill up this little tank multiple times with this bottle of kerosene. It's an excellent prep to have at the house for bad weather. And I've shown y'all this little light multiple times on videos because it's the light out of our camping box or it's out of the mini camper. Um, this little light, it charges up and it'll run forever. You can get somewhere around 25 to 30 hours of charge time without this thing being charged again and it charges with a USB cord. So let me show you something. On the front of the power station that we have, it has several USB chargers or several ports, and it also has a couple of C ports. On the jump box that we have, it has three USB ports on the top of it. So if you needed to charge your cell phone, or if you needed to charge your iPad or any type of electronic device, these devices are also wonderful um, uh, devices that I can plug my phone into and charge my phone. They're great devices. Okay, so we also talked about water and different means of water and how to store water. We want to get a bathtub full of water. We want to get two to three five-gallon buckets with a lid on it full of water and put them up. Because here's the thing, if the lights don't go out, pull the plug on the bathtub and pour the five gallons of water down the bathtub drain. You hadn't lost anything in the world but a few gallons of water, but you had a prep that would have lasted you if the lights had went out. So now let's talk about number three on the list, which is food. Food was a biggie up there. There were so many people that were trying to get out during the storms, and I'm going to be honest. The roads come out of all of these neighborhoods. Those big pine trees were crisscrossed. It was a mess. It took the first two days for the rescue squad and different tree companies to cut the roads out just so people could get out of their houses. This place was awful. It was total devastation with all of the trees in the highway. Nobody could go nowhere. So for the first couple of days, you had to do the best that you could do. So I want to give you just some ideas about food, and these are things that we all have. I set out just some canned goods, and you can go to Dollar General just for your storm preps and maybe get you some type of tote or some type of container and put you enough canned goods inside of your tote to last you from three to five days. By that time, they'll have roads cut out and at least have you where you can get out. I'm not the biggest, I like Spam, but if there's other things I would eat first, I'm not real big on buying a sausage, but I eat them until I can get to where I can get something else to eat. Buy canned goods and have a way that you can store your canned goods to have you a food source for three to five days. So I'm going to write down canned goods. They'll last forever. Um, you don't have to worry about, hey, how long can I get from this? When the storm passes, 
try to eat up the canned goods that you have in your container and buy new canned goods and replace them with and always rotate your food out. One more thing I want to show you is some uh, harvest jam that my sister brought me. It's some kind of grape jelly that looks delicious and I keep it on a shelf. I'm going to use it in a camping video one day because it looks great. We all are a lot of people can jellies and jams and different things like that. Have you some type of food stored and put up that way? So y'all know that my wife, Catherine, has a freeze dryer. And I know not everybody has a freeze dryer, but she freeze dries all kinds of food. I probably shouldn't tell this, but if the world went south or the economy went south, we have enough food that would last us for at least a few days until we could figure out what we're going to do from just the things that Catherine has put up. Um, in the deep freeze, she puts up all kinds of vegetables, um, all kinds of meats. We never let it get to a point. You know what? We might not have lights, but we're going to have something to eat. But here comes a problem with something to eat. When it comes to having canned goods, do you have some way to cook? those canned goods. So here's a great prep that you can do. Y'all saw the little camping stove that I have. I bought that little camping stove. It runs off of butane instead of propane. It runs off a little can of butane that looks like a hairspray can. That hairspray can goes inside that little stove and you can cook multiple times on one can of butane. So that little cook stove or that camp stove is an excellent means of having a way to cook. Another way to cook is with a barbecue grill. So we always keep a barbecue grill out here in the lodge. We also have a the little cook stove. Do y'all remember the propane cook stove fish cooker that we restored a few months ago or a couple of months ago that you can hook a propane bottle to? I can cook anything that I wanted to cook on top of that little propane stove, whether it's fry up meat or if it's heat up corn or any kind of vegetables have a way that you can cook. So I'm going to put down some type of gas grill or stove. If you have a gas stove in the house, you're already money ahead. If you have an electric stove, have a second means outside that you can use to cook with. All right, so here's one more big thing that was uh, good for us as a line crew working out of town. The first day that we was there, we wasn't able to have any coffee. We had bottled water and bottled drinks, but drinks get old in the morning. They really do. On day two, they had the uh, staging area or the site that we met at every day. They had a, a organization come in that was able to make us some coffee. You talking about big, you talking about a morale booster. The day that we all had an opportunity to get a cup of coffee, it changed our whole mindset. Again, there's the little bitty things that you can do that makes your life less miserable. And that's your whole goal during storms is, and the lights are out, is let's do the little things that makes me comfortable. If I'm comfortable, I'm not ill. I'm not near as miserable as I could be. I'm not hating the world. And I want to do the best that I can do because it's not just about surviving. You want to be able to thrive when the lights are out. So one big thing was coffee. And y'all saw a couple of times that I've cooked coffee inside this percolator. And I have a couple of different kinds of pots. I've got another pot that you can just heat water up in that uh, and some instant coffee so I can pour my hot water in my instant coffee after I heat it up on my little camp stove. So once I get the water heated, then I can pour it up and I can make me some coffee. Instant coffee is just not my favorite. I like some coffee that's made. So inside of this particular coffee maker, it's old school, just like grandma had or your mom had. These things are designed that you can put real coffee grounds inside of this percolator and make real coffee. So if I get a cup of coffee in the mornings, this is one thing that took the edge off of everybody up there was an opportunity to drink some good coffee and some real coffee. So have a way 
that you can make coffee, whether it's instant coffee or whether it's percolated coffee. Have a way that you can make that, and you can do that with a gas stove. You could do that with a uh, with your barbecue grill. It might take a few minutes to get the water boiling, but you could do it on a barbecue grill. Do whatever's necessary. Have you some other means of having a way to heat food up and to cook food. So before I go to number three, I want to tell you a quick story. We come around a, a dirt road that had multiple houses on it. Well, in the back of this dirt road lived a Mexican family. And I'm going to be honest with you. These Mexican folks had it going their way. They really did. They had a concrete patio. Now, their lights are out. Their lights have been out for several days. But uh, Hispanics or Mexican people are real family-oriented. And one thing that we found out is that even though there were multiple homes there, they all congregated at the same place. So this one guy had a real big concrete patio, and they had picnic tables set up and lawn chairs set up, and they had a couple of grills set up. Every morning, the mother would come out, and she would cook breakfast for all of the men that were headed off to work. So they had a hot breakfast. They had hot coffee. Um, they had a clean patio that they um, had their breakfast off of. She made them a lunch, and they took their lunch with them. And at supper time, when they would come in at night, she would have something cooked off of that grill for her whole family. And it was impressive. I'm just going to be as honest as I can. We said we're having a candid conversation. Hispanic folks or Mexican folks, they got it going on when it comes to the lights being off. They can have a meal ready and have family time and have a good time. No matter how bad or how miserable the situation is, they never ever showed any sign of being miserable. They laughed and cut up and played and we got out and we talked with the family for several minutes. And not only that, but they made us a bowl of shrimp soup that was something else. And, and we really appreciate it. It's the little things that takes the misery away. So we had a good time with the family, and we really learned a lot of things about different type cultures and how they do things. So try to have you a place that's similar to a meeting place or an area that you can get together and cook. And don't let what's going on over there affect your family life or what you have going on in your family. They really had a good time, and they taught old Tony Ray something about letting some of that stuff go and enjoying the minute that you're in. Enjoy the time that your feet's at. If your feet's here, that's where you need to have your mind at and enjoy the time that you're right there. All right, so um, when it comes to food, have non-perishable foods put up that you can get out and eat. And at least from three to five days. By that time, they can have you cut out or have the roads cut out where you can go do something different. Last of all on the list is sanitation. And we mentioned it in the first video. We talked about how awful the sewage smell was around a lot of those locations because once you get out in the rural areas, downtown was a different ball game. But once you got out in rural areas, it was different because out there, everybody had a well. So they had to have power going to their well. They didn't have city water out um, once you get 15 miles out of town. They didn't have city water. They had well pump water. So now nobody has a well pump and except that Mexican family. That Mexican family had a generator running their well pump, so they never missed a beat. They were living very comfortable until the lights got back on. But anyway with the rest of the folks that didn't have a generator on their well pump they had no water and no way to flush their toilet now i told you we're going to have a candid conversation we all had to go to the toilet um it's not something i like to talk about but we have to be realistic if you're at home and you have no water in your house you've got to have a way to flush that toilet or the smell is going to get to be overbearing inside the house so we mentioned filling up the bathtub with water. I told you these two were going to tie together. So for sanitation reasons, you've got to have a way to flush your toilet. So number one over here is flush the toilet.
if I can flush the toilet, then I can use the restroom when I have to go to the restroom. If you want to be miserable, go outside and try to use the bathroom out behind a pine tree. Or, and we've all done it at some point in time because we're having a candid conversation. Go outside and have to do number one or do number two out in the bushes. Uh, it's miserable. But if I had a way that I could still use the restroom inside my house, if I took those five gallon buckets of water or if I took a pot and I dipped water out of the bathtub and I pulled the lid cover off on the back of my toilet and I filled the back of that lid up or the back of that tank up, I can flush that toilet and remove any waste whatsoever. So a convenience that you're able to get back when the power's off and the water's off is your toilet. The more sanitary you can keep the house, the better you're going to be. The more you can remove the smell out of your house, the more comfortable you can be. It's the little bitty things that keeps you from being so miserable. How many times have I said the little bitty things since I've been making these two videos? We, we had a couple of days of total misery. We really did. But little bit by little bit, they started adding things or we got companies in that could help us as a work group. One thing that we all found out how miserable it was is not having toilets. So one of the first things that they done was brought porta potties in on the uh, staging area. So you would have a place to go use the restroom. Using the restroom is an important part of doing away with the misery that you have during these storms. So have a way that you can flush your toilet. Fill your bathtub up with water. Use some kind of boiler or pot Fill the back of your toilet tank up and flush your toilet, and it's going to improve your conditions. So we all know that power and water and all those things are luxuries, but they're luxuries that we've all grown accustomed to. And I don't know about you, but I like them. I like power and I like water, and I definitely like my bathroom. So being sanitary is a good thing. Um, the second thing, and we've talked about this earlier, is... being able to take a bath. At the staging area where we were, we had shower houses. So there are 18 wheelers that come in and on each one of these 18 wheeler trailers, they're like 53 foot trailers. I don't know how many showers were in each one. The showers are about this wide, maybe three foot wide or two and a half foot wide or something like that. But the whole length of that trailer was shower stalls. So, but it took a couple of days before all of the showers were set up to where we could use them. It was a big deal when we got to take a shower. So now, by day two, we had a place to use the restroom, we had a place to sleep, we had a, um, a place to take a shower, and we had meals when we got there. But for everybody outside of that staging area, it was a different ball game. So be prepared. Listen, here's four things or four different categories that's easy to work on. And a, a couple of them overlap each other, like water and sanitation. If you've got water, you can have sanitation. You can take care of your restroom and your bathroom needs. If you've got flashlights, you don't have to be in the dark once it gets dark. If you have some type of solar generator or just a regular generator, then you've got a way that you can keep your food taken care of in your deep freeze and in your freezer. Again, I felt so sorry for those folks. I didn't know what to do when we started seeing all of that food from their deep freezers dumped out on the side of the road. Is the side of the road to dump it? Is that the place? Probably not, but they were trying to get it out of the house because the houses smelled so bad from decaying food. So I guess folks do what you have to do. All right, so I'm going to end the video. This is part two of storm preps. And I'm glad, I'm super glad that I got to have this conversation. And I really hope that you guys watch the videos. Listen, take some of these things and take them to heart. Try to put you some stuff up. So I want to reiterate one more time about a candid conversation. When the storm comes and the lights are off, if you're miserable, it's your fault you have an opportunity to put a few things up and get you some water caught up 
and now you have a knowledge base of some things that makes your life easier. So don't wait. Go ahead and prepare now. Even if you don't use it, you can always, like food, you can rotate the food out. If you don't use it in a month, eat the food that you put up and put new food in its place. If you hear there's a storm coming, go ahead and buy you a few items and put them up and be ready for the storm. Don't let the storm sneak up on you when you knew within five or six days the storm's coming. Go ahead and make your preps now and be ready for the next time that we have an event like the hurricane that came up through Georgia or the hurricane that just come across the panhandle of Florida. Listen, y'all get you some preps made and try to make your life a little easier. Worry about the small stuff. I'll tell you something else. While we're talking about small stuff, get you a couple of packs of candy and put them up somewhere. Because in the evening times before you go to bed, eat you a piece of candy after you took a bath in the sink. Hey, has anybody ever taken a bath in the sink? In the South or in the great state of Alabama, we have a name for that. So just as a funny situation or a funny part of the video, if you know what we used to call that kind of bath, leave me a comment down in the comment section. If you've ever taken a bath in a sink, then leave me a comment to what that kind of bath is called. Okay, I don't know where Stella's at. She was right here. But we love y'all. Um, candy Conversations sometimes helps us all. We love y'all. We hope that the information that we've went over is going to be useful. We hope you can use it. And listen, life's an adventure. Don't get caught sitting at home.